Pohan, Institute of Geophysics, Polish Academy of Sciences. And today we are going to talk about uh, Greenland, it, um, an extraordinary place uh, on Earth, really extraordinary one. And uh, I decided to prepare this lesson because uh, during our lessons we already visited Iceland, for example, uh, we visited Far Faroe Island, so for, I think it's time we visit the largest island on Earth. Also, uh, we, visit, we visit almost literally uh, Hornsund uh, on Spitsbergen uh, in the Norway ter territory. So Norway, uh, Iceland, for islands are also extraordinary places in the Arctic. But uh, Greenland is really, really, uh, really, really special. Uh, so uh, I hope that um, you understand that it is not possible to uh, talk in detail about all the aspects of this place, but I'd like to show you the most important and most interesting uh, facts, um, at least in my opinion. So, uh, so Greenland, here it is, it even, it's even marked in green. It is situated between uh, two oceans, uh, Arctic Ocean and uh, Atlantic Ocean. And Arctic Ocean is here, Atlantic Ocean is here. Uh, it's uh, east of, uh, of east, uh, situated east of the from the Canadian Arctic archipelago. So physiographically, it's a part of North America continent. So it belongs here. Uh, it's quite large. I don't think we uh, really are aware how large it is. It covers uh, two million and. Um, 2,200,000 square kilometers of land. And it's making it 12th largest nation, but in terms of land area, mm, of course. So it's the world's uh, largest island. Um, Australia, um, Antarctica are larger, of course, but generally are considered to be continental landmasses. And this uh, whole area of Greenland uh, is actually the size of whole Western Europe. Here's the more detailed uh, map. It is, of course, located in uh, both uh, western, northern uh, hemisphere, uh, and it is divided by Arctic Circle. Uh, so I have said that it is extraordinary in many, many aspects. Uh, it the, the territory comprises of the biggest, biggest ice mass, ice sheet. Uh, on Earth, um, so this big, uh, this big island plus um, hundred other small, smaller islands uh, surrounding uh, the main island. Uh, so the most of the thing is, of course, the famous ice sheet. It's so-called inland ice. It's a vast body of ice covering almost two million square kilometers, and it's about. 80% of surface of Greenland is permanently covered with this, with this permanent inland ice. It's the second largest ice body in the world, um, after the Antarctic ice sheet, of course. It is very thick. You can see here the cross section of it. Here is an underlying uh, rock, and here is the, uh, the ice sheet. And it is up to 3.2 kilometers thick, so it is very, very uh, thick. Um, it consists of layers of compressed snow for more than 100,000 years. Uh, so this, um, this is why the, most of the ice cores come from ice cores uh, that bring us data about uh, climate in, in past, uh, comes, from, uh, comes from Greenland. And here is a, one interesting uh, map. It's actually a model, a model presenting what Greenland would look like without the ice sheet. And can you see something interesting here? In the middle. You can see that there is sea in the middle. And we'll, we'll come back to that. Why would there be sea in the middle of the, uh, of the land of Greenland uh, if the inland ice was to melt completely? Uh, so uh, these are some examples of how beautiful this uh, ice landscape of Greenland can be. It's not monotonous. It's really, really uh, beautiful and um, uh, very impressive. Uh, 
uh, the ice sheet is not stationary. It's not. Uh, it's actually uh, constantly moving. It's moving slowly and sliding towards the sea because of uh, the, uh, the gravity. And the ice flows to sea through the fjords, like this one, uh, giving birth to icebergs. And icebergs then drift uh, away. And uh, one of the most famous icebergs uh, in the world, the one that uh, made uh, Titanic sink, actually came from Greenland. It was a chunk of uh, Greenland. Uh, so uh, another uh, very typical aspect uh, of um, Greenland, uh, Greenland landscape are nunataks. Nunataks are this uh, little, um, uh, this little shapes like uh, tiny mountains, not made of uh, ice, but made of rock. And also fjords, like I said, are very, very typical for uh, the Arctic. And also you can see here uh, lakes on the ice, so-called supraglacial uh, lakes. And they're really impressionate. And of course, they are created because of melting, because uh, of melting ice streams uh, on the surface. And those extraordinary pools then uh, occur. Uh, another interesting uh, part and very typical part uh, of, um, of Greenland is that there are thousands, of course, thousands and thousands of glaciers. And uh, even though there aren't any roads, normal uh, system of, uh, of roads, uh, routes, and uh, all that we know from this European uh, system of transportation, there are highways structures that look like highways, but are actually glacier uh, highways. So lots and lots of glacier, glaciers in many different uh, forms. And uh, this is an air view of ice fall. And uh, lots of, uh, like I said, lots of icebergs, like this famous iceberg from uh, that, that sank, uh, like sank Titanic. And um, icebergs in various forms, like in arches and uh, other interesting uh, uh, forms. But of course, Greenland is not only uh, the ice. Uh, the remaining fifth of the island, you can see here around the inland uh, ice, is home to countries flora, countries fauna, and people. And this is where people live. Uh, actually, on the brink of the ice age, uh, we could uh, we could say. You may think it's small, but in fact uh, it isn't. Even this area, even this 20% uh, of an uh, area not covered by Greenland is really, really large. It's as large as Sweden, the, this area around the uh, in Uh The capital city of Greenland is Nuuk. It's the largest city too, and it contains almost a third of Greenland's population. So the whole population is about 56,000 people, uh, whole, the whole country, and about uh, 17,000 people live in Nook. It also contains its highest uh, building. It's quite a normal city, we, we would say, with city bus lines, uh, with houses, and it's actually the oldest house in, in Greenland. It looks like this. It's from 18th century. Houses, very typical, colorful uh, houses like this and the tallest building and statues. This is actually a statue of, um, a statue of Hans Edege, a Danish Norwegian missionary, and who, who, he founded Greenland's capital. It was then known as Gottab, and now it's known as Nook. So it's, we would say, a normal city. <laughs> um, also, there, is, uh, there are other cities smaller than Nook, but um, one of the towns, more towns than cities, one of the towns is uh, also the northernmost settlement in the world, and uh, another record broken by uh, Greenland. It is, it is called Kanak. Looks like this, people live like this. It's actually, for me, it's hard to imagine. <laughs> but yes, they, they live on the brink of, of the ice age. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I mentioned that there's ice, so it must be cold. And typically it's very cold, but Greenland has three types of 
uh, climates and poor Arctic and subarctic uh, climates. And owing to the size of the country, there are great variations in weather from region to region. It's not that uh, there are, uh, there's one weather, uh, one type of weather uh, everywhere. The average temperature, though, is minus seven, and for two months, uh, Greenlandic people don't see sunlight because it's uh, polar night. I told you that they're crossed with uh, Arctic circles. So for two months, no sunlight and average temperature minus seven. Uh, even in the warmest months, temperature is under plus 10 uh, Celsius degrees. And uh, also, which is um, what is typical to, for a Greenlandic climate is that it's a very windy island. So the winds like descend from this ice cap and reach the fjords and the sea, and they're called katabatic um, winds. And so strong winds blowing, the air is very cold, very dangerous for human beings, actually. Uh, so it's not a very pleasant uh, and I don't want to say place to live because people live there and are really used to it, but it's a very harsh environment. So as you can see, uh, also not a lot of rainfall and uh, temperature not that not that high even in July and August. I mean normally. Uh, because of course uh, Greenland is also uh, affected by climate change. Um, so uh, Greenland has lived with those extreme environmental changes for, for a decade or more. And uh, the ice is melting one, mar one month area. There, are, there is more water in the rivers because they are um, fed by retreating glaciers and so on and so on. And for example, this is a photo from, I think, uh, 2014 when the record temperature was recorded in Nook, it was plus 24 Celsius degrees in June. So uh, remember, I told you before that normally maximum is plus 10, so 24 was a real treat. And here is still uh, the chunk of, uh, of the iceberg. So there are constantly new records, the warmest, the wettest, the driest, and mm, actually, uh, we all try to fight climate change, and which is good, but Greenland isn't very in a rush to find climate change because actually, in this case, uh, it might be good for the country's economy. I mean, melting the ice cap will be catastrophic for the environment and for the whole world, but for the uh, country's economy, paradoxically, they might profit uh, from climate change because they can grow new, <clears throat> new plants, new vegetables, uh, there are new fish, um, they, they, their economy is based on fishery and there are new species of fish like mackerel and the growing season is longer. So actually, uh, um, the, I think they are uh, one of the nations that is actually cl uh, quite glad of uh, climate uh, change, warming of uh, global temperature. But of course, there are also some uh, advantages brought by climate change, even uh, in Greenland. Uh, so, uh, they, uh, for example, in 2016, uh, in March, Nuuk hosted uh, Arctic Winter Games, international circumpolar event, and they had to generate artificial snow. And gen normally, uh, March is very, very snowy, but they, they had to generate artificial snow in Greenland. So this was uh, quite uh, unusual, but. Um, what is, which is more, what is more, more dangerous is that there is a lot of permafrost and permafrost is towing and towing permafrost is endangering the construction uh, of buildings of some uh, other facilities like airports, in, uh, infrastructure in, in general. So uh, also bears have less body fat, they are more seen more frequently, uh, of course polar bears are seen more frequently in new villages, they're looking for food. Um, another thing that hunters uh, usually stored their meat 
they meet of animals they uh, they killed uh, in on the ice uh, but now they are not uh, able to do that uh, basically because hungry polar bears uh, just, just take it so they can't store it on, on the ice and uh, the name uh, I think that uh, you might wonder why is Greenland called Greenland and for example Iceland called Iceland because this is Iceland and this is Greenland basically so something's not working with the name uh, like Green, Greenland, Greenlandic uh, name I mean in native um, Inuit language is Kalalit Nunat um, and it literally means land of Kalalit and which means land of people land of native inhabitants it's not very com uh, complicated but how about this um, English and not only uh, English name. How Greenland ended up with, and Iceland ended up with so messed, uh, messed up name. Uh, actually, uh, it turns out there are good, re good reasons behind it and uh, behind those opposite names. It's sort of an ancient marketing uh, or PR, uh, let's say, and that leads us to earliest history of Greenland. So uh, the first people to, that to, came to Greenland arrived about four or five thousand years ago um, from North American continent uh, via Canada uh, when the sea froze uh, in the narrow strait and there were probably seven different groups that migrated from American continent in different um, times. But uh, Greenland was unknown to Europeans until 10th century, and let's see a short video presenting uh, that. cultures appearing, disappearing. Then Danish rule in 14th century. Then it was occupied by uh, United States, and also United States tried to uh, buy it from from Denmark, but uh, Denmark did not accept. So the first person to actually discover Greenland from a European perspective was um, Gunbjorn. Uh, he was sailing from Norway to Iceland, and he saw uh, those, those islands, report, reported that the, he saw those islands, this island, but uh, he did not land. So he was the first person to spot it. But actually, the re re real uh, explorer, a uh, very famous figure for the Arctic, was Eric the Red. In uh, 982, Eric the Red, a Viking, uh, was exiled from Iceland for three years for murders. It's not clear if he murdered someone of, or his father murdered someone. And, uh, generally, he, uh, he was exiled from Iceland for, for three years. And um, he came, uh, he, found, uh, he found Greenland during uh, his, uh, his exile, his journey. And um, he wanted to attract people to it, um, and so he was like exaggerating a, a bit. He was exaggerating positive qualities of this new land and not mentioning that there is lots of ice. He was uh, claiming that it's very green, it's, uh, there are lots of plants, and this is, uh, he, he named his new, uh, this new land Greenland. And knowing that many people living in, in Iceland would be inspired by this. Um, paradise uh, vision. Uh, so uh, this 
So Greenland was actually named by a guy who wanted to trick people uh, into thinking that it was uh, warm, it was full of greenery, and um, so this is this is it. And this is Eric the Red. Uh, he was his name really uh, really is. So as you can see from Iceland to uh, to Greenland, it's not that not that far away. So what's it like? Is Greenland a separate country or not? It's a uh, so-called constituent country. So it's lo it has lots of independence, but the head of the country is Queen of Denmark, and it belongs to Kingdom of uh, Denmark. But actually, it has an extensive type of uh, of self uh, self government. And uh, Greenland became a possession of Denmark in 14th century, uh, before uh, because the Norwegian Kingdom came under the uh, Denmark uh, crown. Uh, but this is not so important, but uh, because it's history, well, history is important, but people is uh, what is most important and one of the most uh, interesting things uh, in the Arctic. So, like I said, first people came uh, to Greenland about four or five thousand years ago uh, from North America, and uh, today um, today's population is our descendants of the last immigration, so-called tool culture. Uh, they arrived here around 9th century, and uh, yeah, this is the history of colonization of Greenland. But you can see here a contemporary photo of an Inuit. Uh, of, don't, don't please don't say Eskimo, they're Inuit. Uh, and who are wearing a very, uh, this guy is wearing a very interesting uh, outfit because these are trousers made of polar bear fur, these are uh, comics, uh, boots made of, uh, made of skin. Uh, leather and, and fur, and these are, this is very uh, interesting, these are goggles, and uh, goggles were uh, initially uh, invented by, by Inuit people, and uh, you can see this very the space for the eyes, but it's, uh, it was made of um, bones, uh, but it was to protect eyes from snow blindness, because when there is lots of snow and lots of uh, sun, then the radiation can destroy uh, the, the site completely. So they had to wear this to, to like sunglasses. sunglasses. Uh, these are uh, Greenlandic people in traditional colors, traditional uh, outfits. Uh, recently, it, is it was indicated by researchers that uh, current inhabitants originated also from Eastern Siberia, Siberia not only from North America, but also from uh, Siberia. What is interesting about uh, Greenlandic uh, people, a lot is, a lot is but uh, researchers found that they have unique genetic mutations in Inuit genome that makes them more adapted to cold and also more adapted to a diet, a fatty diet, a diet high in omega-3 fatty acids. And the side effect is their shorter uh, height. This is actually the first evidence that human populations have adapted to particular diets and that they differ in this physi physiological uh, response. So um, a fish oil diet might be very healthy for Inuit, but not for other, uh, for other uh, places. It's also, as uh, for this adaptation for cold temperature, uh, they have a... Um, they, their genome promotes generating special type of body fat. It's so-called brown fat that is uh, heat generating. So they're well adapted to those harsh uh, conditions. Um, what did uh, Greenland bring to the uh, world heritage? Well, a lot, but there are two words that are purely Greenlandic, but came to a common use all over the world directly. It's kayak, invented by Inuit, and igloo. Igloo or apotiak or igloo, a traditional shelter made of uh, blocks of hard snow. It's not ice, it's uh, hard snow. So uh, actually it is uh, really warm inside the igloo and it's explained why uh, in detail on Polarpedia because there is this uh, new entry about the igloo. So I encourage you to to read that. Why is it uh, warm inside this uh, snowy house? 
and the uh, kayak or a bigger version. The umiak was used widely for transportation, but mostly for hunting, for whale hunting, for seal hunting. So uh, it was very, very, very useful. It is still used for transportation. I said there were no roads, so there, uh, the sea transport is dominating. And about language, igloo and uh, kayak are uh, Greenlandic words. And uh, so Greenlandic is a separate language, is a minority language uh, recognized by Denmark. And uh, because Greenlandic Inuit are the most uh, populous ethnic group in Greenland, about 88% uh, are Greenlandic in, the, uh, in uh, Greenland and uh, European people about 12%. So Inuit means men in the uh, Inuit English, uh, language, um, and uh, I know that uh, there is this um, cliche that uh, Eskimo and we should say Inuit uh, have like 300 uh, words for snow. It's not that simple because uh, each word is. Uh, means something else, like uh, uh, snowflake is something, and fine snow, drifting particles on snow have a different uh, name, so this is it. And uh, economy, uh, what do they do for a living? Well, histori historically, hunting, whaling have always been a very important part of, to make a living in Greenland, but I, I guess we all know that this is uh, whale hunting and this uh, killing one whale could provide food for the entire village for months. Uh, but there are two very specific um, aspects of this economy. First is creolite. Creolite is a mineral. It's very, very rare. It's the, one of the rarest minerals in, uh, in the world. And uh, it's possibly the only mineral on Earth that was mined to commercial extinction. And it was present only in Greenland. It was uh, uh, used to produce aluminium. So this is the first uh, richness of uh, and, and treasure of, uh, of Greenland, not only whales and, and seals, but also uh, it is interesting that uh, in Greenland, Iron Age came earlier than in other parts of the world. They were actually ahead of the, part of the, of the rest of the world because uh, about five to ten thousand years ago uh, a meteorite crashed to the atmosphere over Greenland uh, and it left um, uh, rocks, smaller pieces spread across the inland, but those rocks were not really rocks. They were made of almost of pure iron, so they were used um, for exploiting iron long before Iron Age in the rest of, uh, mm, of the world uh, to produce tools, knives, and they were even trading it, selling it. So uh, it was a really uh, uh, developed. Okay, I said that uh, despite having this large land, 2 million square kilometers, they have no roads, no railway system. And all travel is done by sea, by boat, by helicopter, by snowmobiles, and very often, really, by still by dog sleds, the best transportation uh, in this region. And about other treasures, uh, Greenland is extremely rich in those um, precious gems. And someday uh, it is uh, said that. It might even prevail the fisher that might live from uh, exploiting those uh, gems and not from fishery. And fishery leads us to food. Actually, this is a disgusting photo, but it's very, um, very typical for this uh, for Greenland, so I had to show you that. Um, traditionally, of course, lots of meat, lots of um, oily, fatty uh, food, and two very particular things. Kiviak for special occasions, and kiviak is there. It's uh, uh, these are fermented little oaks in a seal skin. It's also described in detail on Prowarpedia, but uh, they treat it as a uh, very uh, delicious uh, food. And also, uh, it has lots of vitamins thanks to fermenting. So it is um, 
quite important uh, to gain some vitamin D without vegetables. And another thing is polar bear meat. And yes, uh, they can hunt polar bears. And there is even a, a lottery in, in, uh, in Greenland where the price is, weekly price is polar bear meat. And they say it's delicious. So yes, they eat and hunt polar bears even, even now. Uh, so coming to those, uh, this fauna and flora, uh, the polar bear in Greenland is nanok and nanok is umimak. So uh, I won't go into detail with every single uh, species that is present in Greenland. Because there are seagulls, seals, whales, muskox, and of course polar bears. It's quite diverse, this, um, this fauna. And uh, like I said, nanok, polar bears, are hunted. And uh, every year there, there are at least about 150 polar bears killed each year uh, for food, for recreational purpose. So uh, to us it can be quite shocking. Uh, we have also whales, we have narvals, we have uh, seals, uh, birds too, puffins are, are here, deer falcons. Oh, this is an interesting bird, it's fulmar. Uh, it looks like a seagull, but actually it's more related to penguins. Uh, so, uh, but which animal you think is the most dangerous in, in, in Greenland, potentially dangerous and uh, numerous and ferocious predator, any idea? Okay, it's quite late, so I just give you the answer. The most ferocious predator in Greenland is mosquito. It's uh, and it, because it looks like this in the summer. They are so numerous that they are almost unbearable in the summer. They are even dangerous to uh, to the animals, to the livestock, and uh, the Inuits are um, fighting against them, like using some special leaves of Labrador teeth, so called kayasat, uh, to protect themselves from from biting. But it is the most ferocious predator in Greenland, mosquito. And about uh, flora, not so much. Uh, there aren't uh, any trees growing naturally, only artificially planted like pine from Norway. But this flower is interesting. It's a national flower of Greenland. It's Nidjarsjak. It, mean, it means little girl and it's often a name given to, to girls. And it should look familiar to you. Uh, if you, especially if you're a part of monitoring system, yes, this is a bigger picture, maybe now, because it's a dwarf version of fireweed. And dwarf was grown by willow herb. It is a very co popular and common flower in uh, Greenland. And uh, I'd just like to end with uh, showing you the pure beauty of, uh, of Greenland. Attacks. Dog sled. Tourism is getting quite popular in Greenland, so it's not impossible to go there. It's not cheap either, but uh, also, there are lots of research stations, so if you become a polar researcher, you can visit one of those stations. So it is, it is not impossible to see all that beauty in person. I'm not saying I would want to live there, but definitely I would like to see that.
and Aurora, of course. They have Polar Night, but they also have Aurora. Okay, so that's it from me.